And welcome to the Peterson Events Center for the Pitt Panthers host Louisville coming up on Saturday. That is after 23 straight wins for Virginia at home. You put 74 points on the Cavaliers. Jeff, congratulations. How'd you guys, how'd you do it? Well, first of all, thank you. Um, you know, our guys, we had three uh, great days of preparation. Um, my staff did an unbelievable job of coming up with the game plan and you know the drills and practice and the things that we did in preparation for the game. Um, we knew it was an unbelievable opportunity for us. We knew, first and foremost, how good they are this year, uh, how good their program has been for the past 10 years, um, and we knew the type of environment that we were going into. And we were excited about it. We were excited about the challenge. And uh, we had a level of toughness, of togetherness, and of fight. Um, and our guys' attention to detail, to the scout report, to the game plan, uh, they executed that to a T. And then we were able to make a lot of threes. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you have to execute at the end. The yeah. threes have to go down. But more goes into it. What, were you, what did you guys do well to set up those opportunities? Well, you know, we felt, to be honest with you, I think we felt and our guys felt confident going into it. Um, last year when we played Virginia here, uh, we dug ourselves a hole. I think we were down maybe 12. But we scored 45 points in the second half. And so we felt like we found something against the way they defend. Um, and so we felt like that we would be able to generate the shots. Now, it's one thing to generate them. Then you have to make them. Um, and fortunately, we were able to make them. But, you know, they, they, they really attack the ball screens and they hedge really, really hard. And they'll do it way out. And we wanted to try to use a strength of theirs. We thought that perhaps we could use them. We felt that we could maybe use it against them a little bit. And so we really worked on getting off the basketball quickly. And if we did that, if we were able to do that, then we would have an advantage somewhere. We would have a three-on-two or a two-on-one somewhere. I think one of the things that was very important, two things that were very important, number one, our guards, uh, Bob and Jalen, did an excellent job of making reads off of it. And then being able to hit Federico and Guillermo kind of in, you know, in, in, in those short roles and then those guys being playmakers off of it. I thought that was one of the things we, that we did very well. We've seen over the stretch more consistent defense. Yep. What has led to what we're seeing? Well, I think uh, one of the main things that we've had a point of emphasis on is taking away three-pointers. And I think we've done a really good job of that over the past seven games. Um, teams are only making about five threes against us. Now, knock on wood, somewhere we need to make Louisville do the same thing on Saturday, but we've really tried to make a conscious effort of doing that. We've also really tried to get better, and I think we have gotten better at guarding the basketball. Um, a lot of teams, three-point shots come off of penetrating and touching the lane and then spraying the basketball out. So I think we've got better – I think we've gotten better of keeping the ball in front of us. Um, our communication has gotten better. And then really overall with all of it is that our – understanding of how to fight has gotten better. I thought that was a a big thing that we didn't really know how to do when we started conference play. We thought we did. Our guys thought we did. I thought we were a little bit, when I say we, our play, I thought we were a little bit naive at how good we were, but also what's required. And it took us, unfortunately, getting punched a few times um, for us to really understand the fight that's necessary to be able to win in this league. Few teams win after beating Duke. Yeah. And you and your team did. How do you feel about what they learned from that coming off a big game and then going into Saturday? Well, I thought one of the things that helped us with that one is the fact that we stayed on the road. You know, we spent the night in Durham and then we traveled to Georgia uh, the very next day. Um, one of my concerns here is that it's not just – it's not being back here. It's just all the distraction. You know, we won this game on Tuesday, and it's been a lot, you know, since the game was over with. We've received a lot, you know, a lot of attention, a lot of praise, a lot of, you know, 
taps on the back and things like that, which our guys are worthy of because of how we played. But we have to move on to the next thing. Like this game on Saturday is huge. We talked to our team about Virginia. Like we – it was an opportunity for a moment. That was, you know, the word that I used with them in preparation for the game in the three days leading up. And we took advantage of that moment. Well, now we have an unbelievable opportunity because of that. And the thing trying to get them to understand, the more you win, the more there's opportunity. The more there's opportunity to do something pretty good, then the more you have to be consistent, the more you have to sacrifice, you know, the more you have to be, you know, you have to be even more responsible in everything, your time, your preparation, all of those things, they have to continue to increase. And so I was encouraged today, you know, it was our first day back together. I thought we had a pretty good practice. I thought our minds were where they needed to be. Um, and hopefully that leads to a great day of preparation tomorrow and, and we play outstanding here on Saturday evening. All right, we've got more coming up with Jeff. Blake Hinson is going to join us. But coming up next, a very special guest will join us on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. BU Live Campus View Club here at the Peterson Event Center. We are joined by Director of Athletics at the University of Pittsburgh, Heather Like, who just presented Jeff Capel, yeah, with a game ball for his 250th career win. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever done that before, um, but uh, it is really special to have, no doubt, Coach Capel here, but for him to have his 250th win at Pitt, um, it was a memorable one, but this is just one of many more to come. Uh, I don't know if 250, another, another 250, but we'll take it. Um, it's, it's, you know, we're really proud to have him coaching our program and um, it's a it's a historic mark. He doesn't count wins. I know he would not want that at all to be celebrated, but um, it does demonstrate the um, success and the ability to build programs that he has had. Jeff has mentioned how this team has learned how to fight. What do you like when you watch this team? I I watch. Um, you know, you're you're watching the court and the team and everything like that. But if you watch the bench or guys that are not always playing or just come out, um, their energy often matches the energy with the guys on the court. And um, so it tells me that there's a real team mentality and they are as excited about one another doing well than themselves. And that is hard to coach and, and create. Um, and our, I, I believe Coach Capel and our, our staff have done a really great job creating that because you do have to be intentional about building that type of mentality on your program. And, um, yeah, toughness, um, I think Jeff talks about it a ton. You know, we got to learn to fight. we got to be tougher. Pittsburgh tough, right? You hear that? Um, and, uh, again, that's, that's not giving up when things don't go perfectly. And, it you know, it doesn't always go as planned, but how are you going to respond and um, it's going to be a battle, and, and I think they've our our kids have learned that it's a skill that you learn um, because it doesn't if it doesn't come if you don't win that game the first time then you've got to fight through that ad adversity. And um, he talks about it; it's intentional, and um, it's great to see it happening on the court. You mentioned energy, and we're joined by Panthers director of athletics Heather Like. What's it like to be around these guys? What what is that? What, um, what are those relationships like? Uh, it's a joy. Um, you know, I, I, I know our coaches, I think if you ask them, uh, they love coaching these kids. Um, you know, we traveled to uh, Tenerife um, where the twins are from in Spain, and obviously you got to know them in a much more personal way, taking a foreign tour with them in August. Um, but uh, they, are, they are just um, – yeah, well, you're going to meet, you all know Blake. I mean, he's the life of the, the, the <laughs> locker room in many ways. But they each have such a, um, a special personality. And sometimes you would think Blake would be the guy breaking down the huddle, but it's not, right? It's Jalen. And he's probably the quietest, littlest we all know, right? <laughs> but he's the one that stands in the middle and, you know, they break down with, you know, one, two, three, you know, team. And then, and then they say Familia, you know, in honor of, of Jorge and G. Um, and uh, it's it's a real team mentality. They're they're just a lot of fun, and um, and I think they work hard. I think they take it seriously. They have great pride in Pittsburgh and playing for Pitt, um, and that means a lot to all of us as well. well. Obviously, the goal is to win 
Mm-hmm. And this team has been o- doing a really good job at it, at it recently and has done over the last couple of years. But as in your role, when you watch them represent the university the way they have, what kind of pride do you take when you see, see that somebody opening a door, saying thank you, all, all the things we see from this group? Yeah, um, yeah, they're first class kids, um, and I, I know Coach Capel wouldn't want it any other way, and wouldn't expect it any other way. Um, you know, their competitive spirit is um, is is just dynamite, and um, their 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 personality, how they represent us with class. I think I listen to every post game show, uh, you know, after a game, and um, I'm just impressed with whether it's Will. I remember one in particular where Will Jeffers was like thanking the coaches for believing in him, and um, and you know Blake will get up and th- and and say it was because of this pass from this indiv- you know player or, you know how little Bub supported him or you know and they they just are all complimenting one another and more so than ever before right and it, and that's hard to see it's 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 rare to see. Um, so yeah, no, they're, they're, they're a really, um, represent us with pride. Um, there's, you know, uh, you know, they've got emotion, right. And uh, like all athletes, you <laughs> know, um, so they're going to, they're going to step out a little bit, but I, um, and, and, and be, uh, climb have some, g- yeah, you yeah. maybe <laughs> climb a table or two, um, <laughs> unexpectedly, um, but expectedly at that point, I think we all would have, if we could, if we, if we, would, if we could have, um, and, you know, I think, and, and, you know, right after that moment, um, I'll just mention, I think there's nobody that could have described what Blake was feeling better than Blake. And I thought he described it perfectly in, this was a matter of pure respect to the, to the environment that we were in. And it's a very special environment there as, as all ACC schools have their own unique environment. But um, I know deep down inside Blake meant that out of respect. Um, and you know, y'all get, it th- sometimes your emotions get the best of you and that's okay. Um, but I know that he did mean it out of respect, which was great for I him to articulate. I think back to that hug from Greg Elliott last uh. year in the tournament and that just raw, emotion and the and the connection and the family that you mentioned familia yeah uh that is this program well it hasn't been easy this is this is um this is an unbelievable build you know like i remember our first year oh and 18 and i thought oh my goodness who can do this and and can we do this and um you know when you have a coach who believes internally and then builds belief in the student athletes and then you see it come to life. It's um, it's what it's all about, right? And and kids believing in one another then, and um, and and it's just um, these kids are really special because they care about one another. They care about their coaches. They care about Pitt, and they know they're doing things that haven't been done in a long, long time, and um, that we all know can happen. I mean, there's, you know, once you in believe internally, it's going to happen. And, and then obviously we're, we're really grateful for so many people coming back to the Pete and, and making the environment that everybody's heard for so many years. This is one of the toughest places to play, and it is. And so I, I just want to say thanks to everybody, all the Panthers, um, Panther Nation, the Pan, you know, the Oakland Zoo. It's a real, a real advantage to our team when they are um, loud and, and proud. And it's a big Saturday, Rock the Royal. Mm-hmm. That's, some, that's a big event coming up on Saturday. Opportunity for Upper Bowl tickets, twenty dollars and two cents. I mean, yeah. it's it's a it's a big weekend and it's a big game against Louisville. Yeah, huge game. It's called Rock the Royal. If you walk in here without Royal on, uh, we're going to kick you out. No, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> we're going to send you to the merchandise store and buy a Royal <laughs> sweatshirt. So, yeah, I mean, you know, white out. You, I mean, Rock the Royal means wear Royal. Um, all of our staff, everybody. And um, so, yeah, it ought to be it ought to be an awesome environment. And uh, we're certainly excited to um, bring the team back home. Uh, you know, they've been road warriors and uh, yeah, Pittsburgh tough on the road, which they will. And, you know, those opportunities to win on the road, when you hear the stats of times that it's really happened, it, you know, it's tough. It is really tough because the environments you're playing. So when people come to Pittsburgh and they play in the Pete, uh, we want them to know how hard it is. So I know you played a little high school basketball. Is your game like Blake's? 
Um, from the logo, um, probably not from the logo. Uh, you know, I was, I was, um, you know, more of a, uh, yeah, I like the elbow. I like this, uh, the, the baseline uh, drive uh, to the basket, but yeah. But you've seen but some he great and I shooters. Shoot, he, she and I, he and I shoot foul shots about as, as now he's gotten a lot better. I, I give him a hard time, but um, that's not my strength. <laughs> so anytime uh, they don't do that well, I'm like, guys, it's free. Come on, let's go. You know, so he's he's a special player. Well, Blake is going to join us next. Heather, thank you so much for joining us here today. Blake Henson comes your way next here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Thank you. And we are at the GBU Live Campus View Club, back with head coach Jeff Cable before Blake joins us. And before he joins us, you know, it's NBA All-Star Weekend. Yeah. One of the biggest things, obviously something Blake does very well, is <laughs> three-point shooting. So I thought, let's go back in time. Think about some of the matchups you would like to see, one against the other, in the three-point shooting competition. And what it's hard to do is you have to take recency bias out of it for a second. So – Let's go through some of these names, and I'm going to pull this close to me so I have it. <laughs> All right, let's start with this. Three-point matchup. Reggie Miller, Larry Bird. Larry Bird. No question. There wasn't even hesitation there. He's the only guy that won it three times in a row. Dame Lillard, James Harden. Dame. All right. Yeah. Harden, though, would dribble it for about That's 18 seconds. That's why I would seconds. pick Dame. <laughs> it's just <laughs> catch and shoot. All right, here's a Mavericks matchup. Dirk or Luca? Hmm. I, th I, I think I'd go Dirk. I think I'd go Dirk. That's, that's a tough one. I mean, that's a tough one. I that's love the really statue of him. The, the fadeaway. Yeah. All right, Carmelo Anthony or Paul George? For threes, Paul George. But overall, overall scoring. Mello. Yeah, scoring Melo. Here's a couple of big shot guys: Robert Ory. Or J.R. Smith? Ori. Big sh just big shots? Or Big shot threes. Not even close. Ori. Steve Kerr or John Paxton? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would go Kerr. I'd take the percentages. All right. I think he has one of the best three-point field goal percentages ever. One of the greatest names in NBA history, World Be Free <laughs> or Chuck Person. The Rifleman, Chuck Person. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Vince Carter or Mark Price? Shooting. Carter has a lot of threes. No, he has a lot of threes, but I'd go Mark Price. All right. I'm with you on yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Here's one. They, I'm sure you didn't see either of these guys shoot. Jerry West or Pete Maravich? <sighs> Man, that's hard. Pete Maravich was my dad's favorite player. Went to high school in North Carolina. I probably shouldn't pick Jerry West because of where <laughs> he went to school. <laughs> so I'm going Pete Maravich. <laughs> Kevin Durant or Kobe? Oh, Just catch and shoot threes, I'd go Durant. I would go Durant for that one. This one, I don't know if anyone could, could beat him, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Ray Allen up against Steph. That's a tough one. I'll be honest with you because Ray just catch and shoot. But I would go Steph. I, would, I wouldn't pick anyone over Steph. In a competition, the only person I would pick over Steph, I'm not saying he's a better shooter, but in, in that competition, I would pick Larry Bird over Steph. But Steph overall. So Bird? Yeah, in that competition, yeah. I mean, you heard the stories, man. He walked in the oh, locker room so and said, like, okay, which one of you guys is coming in second? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. you know, prime Bird, 80s Bird, before he hurt his back, man, was like nothing to mess around with. All right, we have a couple of additional <laughs> ones here. Jason Capel or Jeff Capel? Shooting? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Jeff, you or Chris Collins? Me. You hear Look that, at the percentages. <laughs> Look at the percentages. <laughs> Look at the number of made threes and percentages. <laughs> Ronald Ramon or Blake Henson? Blake. Oh. I didn't see Ronald a lot shoot. I, I, I watched, you know, a little bit. But in just a catch-and-shoot competition, I would pick Blake because I've seen him. I didn't yeah, see him walking in, but <laughs> 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 I've seen him get going. And Are you anxious to see Sabrina v. Steph? I am. I am because she can sh – she has the record for most ever in the competition. Yep. 
And so I'm really, really excited to see that. I'm glad they're doing it, um, especially for women's sports. And uh, I, I think it's going to be amazing. A little later, I want to ask you about the slam dunk competition. Yeah, that'd there be are great. some names involved in that <laughs> as well. We continue. Blake is going to join us on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're at the GBU Live Campus View Club here at the Peterson Events Center, and 12 points from 1,000 as a Panther alone. Blake Henson joins us right now. How y'all doing? Does it seem like you're 12 from 1,000 here? No, nah, that's a lot. Um, I, I, they told me yesterday, well, not they, but um, I just I had an interview yesterday, and I, I got told, um, no, nah, heck no, nah, I didn't realize it was that much, but um, blessed to have the opportunity, blessed to have a coach to give you the opportunity to um, score the way I have been doing, and hopefully I keep it up. Yeah, to that point, why does it work so well here? Uh, it's uh, all the credit to coach. I mean, I, this is my third school, and it hasn't worked like this other ways, and there's a reason, because um, the coach and um, the faith in my abilities, but the faith in my um will to win is also what it is. He just kind of lets me uh, feel the game out how I want to because he knows I want to win. So I think that's why it works. Congratulations on Tuesday. Uh, tough place to play, good defensive team. How were you guys able to get it done? Uh, Just like I told them boys, like on paper or word to mouth, it's a tough place to play. And um, they're a great defensive team. But that was my first time playing there. Um, I think that was everybody's first time playing there. Besides on maybe Will. Um, and we were going to find out. That's what I told him. I was like, well, let's find out. Let's not take everybody else's word for it. Let's find out. And um, we definitely have our own perception of what everybody has to say about it. Give us the, the feeling when you're in a, a road place, everybody's against you. You guys pull out a win. And that what's it, what it's like in the locker room when you guys all come together and, and pull out a win on the road. Man, the most unfortunate part about that, honestly, for me, is the last two – uh, like ranked road game, so the Duke game and the Virginia game, is I'm doing TV for like, I don't know, 15 minutes after the game. So I walk in and the turn up's almost over. I'm like, man, like, this is crazy. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody's like all tired. And then they see me, they're like, woo. Like, and they just <laughs> How much of what we see on the court is you off the court? Or in the room, or in practice. In practice, it's the same thing. I practice the same way. I play all the way. Um, just me off the court. I don't know. I listen to um, soft music and R and B all day, so I don't do really, really think I do. I do. Um, so who do you it, hit? Who's who's your R and B? Man, I've been listening to um, Umi. I don't even think anybody here knows who that is. Umi, she's a great R and B singer. Um, Taylor Swift is always in the rotation. Um, and then probably after that, I'll probably go with – um. there's been so much Umi. I'll probably go with – um. let's just say – why am I drawing a blank? Let's just say um, LMA. All right. Probably the people I listen to the most as far as just off the court, just walking, just sitting around. There's some – I mean, there's some names involved there. But I, uh, Taylor Swift? Uh, yeah, I've been loving Taylor Swift since a kid. I really have. So um, I'm glad to see her getting all this pub. Honestly, I am. Like, I've always been a, a supporter of Swifty, if, if some might call it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've always loved Taylor Swift. Speaking of uh, smooth like R&B, these, you said it the other day, you know, you started the season with a couple of high school guards. But they're not high school anymore. What, how have you seen Jalen and Bub grow? Just the comfortability, like, because you can – the talent was so blaring. From the beginning, from the beginning, their talent was blaring. Um, and, I mean, it showed, it showed more with Carlton more than J-Lo to, to start. But now since they're both having, like, this new role, not they're both, J-Lo has came into the new role, the starting role, um, the comfortability of the game is showing. The game hasn't – nothing's changed as far as their game. Nobody has told them to do anything really necessarily different. It's just the comfortability is mixing in with the talent and it's flourishing. It is uh, J Lo, by the way, huh? He's cool with J Lo, even with the other J Lo. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I call him um, I call him PT Magic. Um, uh, I don't know like why I started calling that. I call him. He has a ponytail, so that's where the PT came from. And then he's like, he's all he's he's so small. He reminds me of, like Peter Pan. So I, that's where the magic comes from. 
And I call him the PT Magic. <laughs> I thought maybe Magic Johnson was like getting some some love there. Nah, now. he nah. reminds me of Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> You can't go on social media without hearing like NCAA talk now with your team. How do you, how do you, look at that, deal with that, all that stuff out there? That was the goal from the beginning. So I mean, I'm glad to hear it. Um, but I mean, whatever's going on the social media really isn't the focus. But I'm glad it's in the conversation. But that was the goal from the beginning. So I'm glad we're here. All right, Blake, when we come back, let's do some more than just basketball questions. Let's do it. As we continue on the Jeff Capel Show with Blake Hinson on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And we are joined from Blake Hinson. We're up at the Campus View Club, which is just, well, is it outside of your range up here? No, heck no. We in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know you were a good shooter? Uh, I, I've been one since, um, I've been one, I would say, about, Fifth grade, sixth grade, somewhere around there, honestly. Like, I mean, I was good enough of a shooter to to, to tell other coaches, like, no, nah, I'm going to shoot this. Because I've always been the big guy. They're like, get inside. No, I can shoot. <laughs> I, I can shoot better than everybody else here. So, yeah. You must have driven coaches nuts. Yeah, that's why eventually my dad just had to do it because he was the only <laughs> one who could be like, who could, who could have it under control. When did you first beat your dad at basketball? I still haven't, like, ever legitimately, like, beat him. I think the first time I gave him, like, a legit move, like, ooh, my dad was just like, all right, we'll pick up on this tomorrow, and tomorrow <laughs> never came. <laughs> what does basketball mean to you? Uh, basketball is a form of – basketball is just a quicker simulation of what life is in every day and even on the court is um, – competitive it's camaraderie with your teammates and it's um, pride out of what the school you're repping and it's just it's the same thing in life um so yeah i think it's just a simulated version of that all right steph is taking on sabrina ionescu in a three-point shooting contest how about you and caitlin clark we call it like from the logo that would be extremely exciting um that would be extremely exciting caitlin is a phenomenal shooter and she I mean, I haven't really watched more games than I watched myself. I've watched her plenty for sure, but she shoots it from deep more often than me, and people are guarding her from out there. Sometimes they just kind of look at me like, no way you're going to shoot that, and I do. They're guarding her from out there. So I'm going to have to say me, but I'm not going to be in there just thinking it's a cakewalk for sure. <laughs> you might give football another shot someday. I don't see it. I don't see it, but – um. I'm a competitor at heart. Like, <laughs> if some if some crazy situation goes down where I can't play basketball anymore, I w I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to it. You're starting to love the hills on campus. Um, never said that. <laughs> <laughs> a class that you hated on the first day, but ended up loving it. Uh, the argument class. The argument class. We ended with an argument. Uh, he was it, he was he went when he said attendance and um the homework was like factored into the grade. I'm like okay, all right, that's gonna be one of those. And then um at the end I was all over it. Where's the homework at? Because I'm trying to figure out how I can argue with the other group and we can win because that competitive nature came out again. <laughs> Seems like a good class for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you've had enough basketball for a day, how do you escape? Man. Madden, 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 and a little bit of Call of Duty. But my friends back at home who play Call of Duty with me, man, they know how to talk basketball. But when I tell them, man, we just try to play video games, we kind of space out for about two, three hours, and we just play Madden and Call of Duty. What was it like to visit the Twins' home in Spain? Man, it was great. It was everything. It was great. And I'm um, glad the Twins got to have their little time at home. Um, you know, it's a shame they don't get more time over there. Um, but it's so far away. But it was it was fun. We're joined by Blake Henson. How can I entice you to be a Steeler fan? You don't have to entice me to be a Steeler fan. I love Mike Tomlin. Um, I, I'm a Kenny Pickett guy. He's a Pitt guy, so I'm with that. Um, the defense is is what everybody wants their defense to be. You don't have to. You, I'm just not going to put him above my books. That's all. <laughs> If you don't know, he's a Tampa Bay fan. It's from, from the area. Food you must eat before a game. Food I must eat before the game. 
uh, fish, like salmon. When they had the salmon, they had, I got to have it. Food you want after a game? <sighs> Whatever's there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whatever is there. Because d- we eat four to five hours before a game, and I don't eat anything after. Like, I makes because, I mean, it's not like I'm jumping high anyway, but it makes me feel like I'm going to jump even lower if I eat something close to the game. So I don't, I don't know if I empty stomach. It doesn't matter. Do you do a Jeff Capel impression? I really can't. I really wish I could because I listen to him every day. Like, I know what he would say. I just can't say it like him. You know what I mean? <laughs> gotcha. So uh, if you're a coach one day, do you what what are things you would take from him? His 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 aura, his I can't t- I can't take his aura, his um his like his mantra, his mentality. He never gets outside of his body. Like you, you we all know the coaches, the Billy Knights who throw the chair on the ground and all that, and that definitely gets your attention. But as a coach, you know your players have your atten- have your respect and your attention when you don't have to do all that, but they still listen every word you say. I think that's what I would take from him. Your other than basketball, your other favorite pit sport to watch? Oh man, that's tough. You gonna make me choose? You gonna make me choose? It's gonna be between football and volleyball, and I think I'm gonna go with volleyball. Best Monopoly player? I I won the last game. I won the last game. It was me, Will, uh, Kenny. He's a manager. Steve. He's a manager. Uh, was I Jake. heard Will is cutthroat. Will gets into heated arguments at the table, like to the point where you're sitting down, like, am I going to have to fight, like, over Monopoly? <laughs> <laughs> Best Uno player? Carlton. You could be an NBA player for a night. You could jump into somebody's body and be an NBA player. Who would you want to be? Right now, today? Yep. Luca. Uh-huh. After you graduate, you will come back and sit in the Oakland Zoo for a game. Yeah, sure, why not? You will cry on senior night. Most likely. I mean, look with everything that's happened my last three years. Like, it would be hard really not to. I'm not going to be out there just with pre-made tears in my eyes. But, you know, it's, 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 it's nothing but happy and joy emotions that come to thought coming from uh, doing countertops and getting extra cardio at LA Fitness that clearly wasn't working that well and showing up here. So, so how would you say Pitt has impacted your life? Like, you flipped it upside down. I mean, it really has. Like, just like I said, like, I'm not a – I don't do Instacart anymore. I don't um, play basketball with people who are just getting off work who are wearing boots. Like, seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm dead serious out there. And it's just like, you know – but, you know, I don't do that anymore. And it's not like I can't go back, but if, like it's humbled me and I've came here and you've made me think more of myself. Last one. Floor is yours. For Pitt fans uh, that have grown tight to you, you've grown tight to them, what is something you would want to tell them about what the fans have meant to you? Uh, for the fans, I would, I would love to tell y'all, like, y'all literally changed my life in, a, like, a physical standpoint but in like a spiritual standpoint as well. Um, Just like I said, my spirit was a little broken, to be totally honest with you, two years off of just not playing the sport you love. And I've always been an exuberant, confident person. And when I came back here, I wasn't that guy. I was kind of, you know, life has kind of got me, you know what I mean? But um, because of the fans and because of these coaches, I have to to add them too. Because you guys wouldn't like me if it wasn't for these coaches. Y'all changed my life, and I'm talking not physically. Physically, is that's cool, but spiritually, like, it's a whole different. I used to – I was a morning person last two years. I found myself sleeping in a lot, not really, like, looking forward to the day. It's totally changed now. Like, I'm popping up 7.30 all the time. So, I appreciate y'all for that. Blake Henson, everybody. Uh-huh. Jeff Capel is going to join us, rejoin us on his show, coming up next on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. People probably ask – you or ask coaches, like, why do you still do this? Blake Henson, right? Absolutely, man. He is, uh, he's one of a kind. He's, he's one of the best guys that I've ever coached. And uh, he talked about, you know, the impact that this place has had on him. He's had an equally uh, huge impact on me, our coaching staff, and our program. 
All right, so Slam Dunk con Contest is coming. Yeah. I'm a Spud Webb guy because <laughs> I saw him do things at his height that I didn't think people could do. Vince Carter, Dwight Howard, obviously Michael had a, a pretty elite dunk. Yeah. Who are you taking in a slam dunk competition? Maybe none of them. No, the best – I mean, the best guy ever was Vince Carter. I mean, that's the best dunk contest ever because he made every dunk. He didn't miss one. You had the hype and the energy in the building, and, man, he over-delivered. Um, a close second to me contest was the Zach Levine, Aaron yeah. Gordon. That was a really, really high-level dunk contest. I wish they'd get back to that. I wish the main guys would get in it like they used to. Um, I, I, I don't know if this this generation of – of guys are scared to compete, scared to lose because of their brand and things like that. I mean, I think Michael Jordan lost the dunk contest to Dominique Wilkins. Um, it used to be the best guys got into it. I, I wish they still did that. I can imagine what that tension was like after that. <laughs> as competitive as Michael Yeah, was. no question. Uh, when we come back, speaking of competitive, Louisville is starting to play some really yeah. good basketball. That's who's here Saturday at 6. It's Rock the Royal on Saturday. You can hear that game. Right here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network as we continue with the Jeff Capel Show on the aforementioned Pitt Panthers Radio Network. It's funny, Jeff. There are things I remember <coughs> you saying over the span of a season, and one of them is when you played L Louisville the first time, like, this team is going to get hot. We don't want to play them. Well, you look at what they've been doing, but they put 101 on Syracuse. Yeah. Like, they're scoring the basketball now. Yeah, they've won two of their last four games. Uh one of their losses in the last four, they lost by two, one possession, the game at Syracuse. I'm sorry, 101 was Florida yeah, State. Yeah, 101 was Florida State. They scored 92 against Syracuse. They're averaging 87 points over the last uh, four games. They're shooting the basketball better. Uh, their big guy, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, is averaging almost a double-double and a high double-double, like a 20-10. and 10. Um, He's at 19.5 points a game and 9.5 rebounds. Um, they've gotten better. They haven't turned the ball over as much as they were earlier. We played them earlier. I knew that they were talented. You could see that. Uh, but it, it's, it's, there was a lot of noise around their program, and it's hard for a kid not to be, you know, overwhelmed by that. Um, the thing that I thought when we played them the first time, they're still fighting. They're still competing. It's not like they've just laid down. And so uh, that's a testament to Kenny and the staff. And we talked about the last four games. They're playing well. Yeah, and, and Kenny's faced a lot of pressure. But yeah. they've been able to – I think they have six guys over nine points. And then one of the guys that isn't is that uh, Curtis Williams, who had a yeah. couple of threes against you in that Talented first match. Talented, can shoot the basketball. has got great size. Uh, Sky Clark is averaging a little bit over 17 a game. Uh, Trey White, who didn't play against us the first time we played them. Um, he's playing really well, about 16 and a half, 17 a game himself. Um, they've got good size. They're really rebounding. They're averaging 14 offensive rebounds the last four games. Um, and then one of the biggest keys is that we have to play them without fouling. They're getting 24 points a game from the foul line. The first time we played them, we did a really good job. They only scored 11 points from the foul line. They only got there 14 times, so we did a good job of that. And then we're going to have to do a great job in transition defense. They are really fast. They get out and they're pushing it. So play without fouling, transition defense, and we have to control the glass. That will help take away the 87 points a game. In 30 seconds or so, are you seeing better play inside? Do you feel <clears> like <throat> Fetty, especially from a rebounding standpoint? I do. I think Fetty and G, that company, I think they're doing a really good job. You know, Fetty's back to blocking shots again, uh, a little bit over two a game over the past six, seven games. Um, G can stretch the floor out. They're both doing a better job defensive rebounding and doing a better job uh, defending inside. All right. Our thanks to Jeff Cable. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. To Heather Like, the director of athletics here at the University of Pittsburgh. To Blake Henson and for him opening up and sharing with us. Uh, we appreciate him. To Amanda King, who has been up since 5 in the morning. She was <laughs> at work working on a warm -a -thon to help people in the community. Oh, nice. Uh, all of her hard work has paid off to Joel Nelson, to Casey Garrow, and her daughter Brooke is running around <laughs> here somewhere, uh, to Matt Plisga and Allison Rubin as well. 6 o'clock, it is Rock the Royal, airtime at 5.30, right here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network Saturday.